Hello, Chris and all. Behind me, you can see the Avon Conway where it enters the Irish Sea, just below the Cavnedi Mountains here. And every year, thousands and thousands and thousands of tourists and visitors make their way to this locality. But they're not coming to look at the river. They're coming to look at this building across the river, the Conway Castle. However, if only they knew, if they were to turn around 180 degrees and look in this direction, they would see more history than on that spot there, 700 years worth more history. Today, we're at Castell de Ganwy. Moving on and having a look around, the River Conway. Everybody's heard of the River Conway and the Castle Conway, but what does Conway mean? Well, the second part of the name, Uy, is quite uh, simple and straightforward. There's no arguments over it. It comes from the Welsh word Gwy, which was ancient Welsh for a river. It's the first part of the name that there's a little bit of a debate. Some will say it comes from Can or Cown, which means reeds. And they say that's where Canovium, uh, tied here now, the Roman fort, that you heard about in the last episode comes from. So it's the river full of reeds. The others will say it comes from cun. Cun meaning the old Welsh word for chief. And we see the word cun in cuntav, which means first. So cun gwy, which mutated over the years to conwy. So indicating that it's the chief river or the principal river. And this, if any, is the, is the favored one. But again, there's a bit of a debate on it. But as you can see, fantastic view. Fantastic. This would have been at one time in Gwynedd itself. It's now in Conwy, uh, the county of Conwy, but it would have been in Gwynedd. More about that when we get to the top. <laughs> sat on top of the castle walls here, at, or the remnants of the castle wall here at uh, Deganwy. It's okay, ma'am, I'm quite safe. There's not much of a drop there, big drop there, so I've been safe. Okay, so Deganwy, where does the name Deganwy come from? Again, we've got uh, that uh, debate about the start. We hear the word 
we again, we again relating to the river Conwy. Now the debate this time is some people have said that it's from Din Conwy. Din is the ancient word for a fort or a fortress, but that doesn't quite make sense. In actual fact, the name Diganwy comes from the tribe that used to live here at the beginning of time. And that tribe in English is called the Dicante tribe, or in Welsh, the Dugant. So the Dugant, who covered a large area, but the ones that lived here were the Dugant, who lived on the Gwy. Dugant, Gwy. Obviously mutating over the years to Diganwy. So that's where the name comes from. Now, as this is Wales and what's in a name, uh, again, we're looking at local place names. And are, are there any clues at all here locally still remaining to the fact that there's a castle here or there's a site of importance here? And yes, there is. In actual fact, there's three. The site of where we are, this local patch here, is no locally as Vardre, V-A-R-D-R-E. And that's a corruption of the old Welsh, Meir Drev. Meir means mayor. And Drev, although now we use Drev for the word uh, town, historically it was a homestead, something like a home farm. So it would have been the mayor's home, the mayor's homestead. So that straight away uh, indicates that this was a place of importance. At one time, the Ganwy was called Gannock. And still in the local streets here, we've got Gannock Park and Gannock Park West, so the name's still there. So what does Gannock mean? Well, Gannock is an ancient Saxon word for a hill fort or a refuge in the hills, often fortified. So Gannock, so there's a bit of a clue. And then lastly, the local high school here, the Welsh language high school is called Ysgol y Creithin. And schools are always a good source of, of ancient history. Creithin. Now then, the latter part of that word is din. We heard that before about din being a fortress. Creithin. And what that means is a battle encampment. Or it's an area of land under the protection of a castle. So that's where the wherein, as we call them, the common people, would have lived. Not within the castle itself, but within the confines or just outside the walls of the castle, getting protection from there. So Maerdre, Vardre is a clue, Gannock is a clue, and Craithin is a clue. So again, those three names still heard today tell us that this was of significant importance. And it was. And I'll have a little walk around now and we'll do a little bit more about the history. We're at the bottom again uh, by the remnants of the most prominent remnant of the last castle to be built here. Did I say last castle? Yes, I did. Because Diganwy Castle should be castles. It has a checkered past to say the least. But we'll start at the beginning. Clearly, the first history of anybody living in this area were the Dugans, as I mentioned before. But the first fort or castle, a wooden castle, was built by Malgwin Gwynedd in the 6th century. He was the king of Gwynedd at the time, and as I mentioned, we were in Gwynedd then. They lived happily there until the year 812, at which time it was partially damaged, or quite severely damaged actually, by lightning. So it was weakened then. But 10 years later, it was attacked by Carewolf of Mercia, and he totally destroyed the castle. Moving on to the 11th century, and the Normans had a go. Robert of Ridlan came here and built a fort. And he spent many years here defending it from the constant attacks of the Welsh. And he actually died here. But it was in Norman possession for quite some time, until 1213, when Llewellyn Vaur took possession of the cattle. Cattle? Battle. He may have had cattle, I don't know. However, on the death of Llewellyn Vaur in 1240, his two sons, David and Griffith, fearing that they couldn't 
stand the onslaughts from the English, destroyed the castle themselves to save the English getting their hands on it. However, only five years after that, Henry III came along and built a castle. And it's the remains of that castle that we see today. Now, from that time, there's a very famous letter that was sent by one of um, Henry III's soldiers, sent it home, where he wrote about being fed up of doing nothing but watchings, fastings, and prayings. And in his letter, he mentioned watchings, watching at night because they were constantly being attacked by the Welsh. Fastings because they'd been surrounded, there was no access to food and they were starving. And also they were struggling with the inclement Welsh weather, having only summer clothes and living under canvas. And lastly, prayings, praying that they could go home back to the warm, back to the safety, and they would do so uninjured. So how did this last castle come to its ruin? Well, it came to its ruin in 1263, when Llewellyn the Last ransacked it. And again, rather than letting it fall into English hands, he destroyed it. So that was the last of the castle. Now then, by this time, King Edward was on the scene and was trying to build a ring of steel around Wales, a series of castles to entrap the Welsh and control the Welsh. And he camped here and considered putting the castle here. However, he realised that it wasn't that prime a spot because although it was easy to defend in some respects because of the sheer drop, it was also easy to starve people out because there was no ready access to water and food. So he decided to build his castle on the other side of the river, which he did largely using stones from this castle. And he built it on the site of an old abbey and the monks there agreed to sacrifice the land once alternative land had been found for them. And that was found for them in Mainland Abbey in Dufferin Conway, in the Conway Valley. It's confession time. Uh, earlier on, you've, you've seen me do a little bit of the history of the Ganway Castle. Uh, and I took a bit of a breather and I met a couple of ladies up here on the hill and um, had a very, very pleasant chat. And it turned out one of the ladies, lovely lady, uh, was the owner of this caravan park that you see behind me here. And we got into a discussion about Welsh place names. And I had a stab at guessing what the name of the caravan park meant in Welsh, and I got it wrong. Um, suffice to say, I went back home, researched it, and I thought, oh, I've got to add that. I've got to put that in this short film. So I thought, I'll wait for a day when the weather's fine. I'll put the same clothes on. I'll film it. Nobody will be any the wiser. So when I left home, it was nice and sunny, and I arrived here. <laughs> and uh, Welsh weather came back to bite me, and you can see the sea mists have come in. So it's going to be pretty obvious to you um, what's happened. But anyway, uh, for me, it's far too interesting not to include it. Okay, so the caravan park below us there, lovely little caravan park, is known as Mais Dolai. Now, Mais is quite simple, really. We still use it. And in general terms, in these days, we refer to it as a field. However, historically, if you trace back the history of the word mice, it means a level piece of ground um, dedicated to a particular use. So we hear it these days with some such things as mice parkio, car park, mice awarenai, airfield, mice chwarai, plain field, and so on and so forth. Go back again, and we find that research shows that it means a piece of land, flat level piece of land, attached to a castle or under the care of a castle dedicated to an activity. So there we have it. I thought initially Dolai would have been meadows or dale because Dol is a meadow or a dale. Um, but the spelling's slightly different. So Dolai. So what does Dolai mean? Well, research shows that it, historically it meant, in ancient Welsh, it meant a curved piece of wood, a bowed piece of wood, a bow. Um, and of course, the Welsh were renowned throughout Europe for their skills with the longbow. The Welsh invented the longbow round about 1180. 
So dolai bows, archers. So I think, I truly believe, that where this Karapag here, my dolai was the archery field, or the field for the archers dedicated to the castle of De Ganwy. And that helps us time the name, because the bow was invented in 1180. Uh, it wasn't used by the Normans as such, and it was by the Welsh, they become prolific at it. So the name My Stolai probably originates back to 1213 when Llewellyn Vowell was with the castle. So there we have it, an ancient name, modern caravan park, ancient name. And for me, that is the importance of retaining the original Welsh place names in places such as this. We see too many of them being changed to make it easy to say. And when we do that, we lose a little bit of history. So full, full credit to the owners of this park who've retained the name. By retaining the name, we know that that patch of land was used by archers likely affiliated to Llewellyn Vaur, Llewellyn the Great, back in the 13th century. So that's an old name. So, uh, yeah, it had to be added. I'm going to go and try and find some sun again now. So the next part of the clip, it'll be sunshine again. So there we are. Apologies for that. That had to be included. So there we have it. Casteth the Ganway in all his glory and all the, uh, the history covered. So it's a lovely walk. It's only a very short distance from um, a street called My Sacasteth. And I'll put that in what three words? My Sacasteth, which means castle field. Um, short walk across the field and you're there and it's nice and easy and the views are absolutely spectacular so i encourage you to have a walk so i hope you enjoyed it i certainly did um so if you did please press the like button or as my six-year-old would say smash that like button like a butt <laughs> it's a terrible saying but he wanted me to say it so they are charlie that's for you um please press subscribe and watch out for the next one take care Yeah.